Welcome to Crossroads and Cauldrons. We are two witches with jobs, families, and busy lives just like you. We talk about weaving the web of community, practicing magic, and life in the Deep South. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm Selena. And I'm Luna. And this is Crossroads and Cauldrons podcast. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And in, <laughs> in picture, we have video now. So check that out on YouTube if you're listening to the audio version of this show. Uh, right. there, should be a, <laughs> there should be a link in our description with the uh, link to the YouTube channel. Okay. There, I did it. I did the thing. Yay. Yay. And we also we have a new theme song, uh, and that was provided for us, special by Justin Hunt, and his information is also in the show notes, so check him out. Yep. And uh, hi, Luna. How you doing? Got hey, a, girl. Got, got a new background there. You're like the dungeon mistress. La, la, la. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Yeah. Did you bring, like, your flail? You're going to have to hang up your... Or is that for a different show? Hmm. I might have to bring a flogger out or two. <laughs> just just one or two. Yeah, no, no. Let's don't get crazy. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> no, I, so, thought it, I thought it looked kind of cool. So I was like, what the heck? I love it. I love yeah. it. You look yeah. like you're fixing to get like sucked into a portal. It's great. Maybe. We'll see. If maybe you after do, the show. <laughs> right, maybe after the show. Okay. Yeah. So how are you? What's going on? Let's Doing check good, in girl. before we... You're doing good? Oh, great. Yeah. Awesome. How about you? I'm doing pretty good. It's been, um, mm, it's been kind of a lot going on uh, in the Southeast right now. Um, lots of people sick and, and lots of um, sort of pastoral care and things like that. So there's been a lot of work to do. Um, uh, if, you, if you do any sort of crossing work, Mm -hmm. It's been kind of a heavy chore lately. Um, so my my sympathy goes out to everyone who's doing that work. It's not an easy time right now. Um, yeah. But I'm hoping that people will um, be smart and be safe and, and we can get through this. Uh, as our ancestors before us have gotten through these times. So that's where I'm at. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking, cool. I'm talking about COVID and people being sick and things like that. So that's where I'm at. Um, but interestingly, I saw, and this is what m made me want to talk about this tonight. Um, mm -hmm. Last week, maybe last week, maybe the week before, I don't know. Um, Devin Hunter uh, posted in his Modern Witch Facebook group um, a question, and I was like, that's a really great question. So I wanted to see what your thoughts were about okay. it. So he, he said um, that a lot of people talk about how we came to the craft, you know, how we um, maybe left a birth religion and, and found our way here. Mm -hmm. um, and then he was like, but why do you stay? You know, why, why do you continue to stay here? Um, right. It's, so I was like, that's an excellent question. It is um, a very so good to question. I wanted to see how you, uh, I wanted to talk about it. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> gosh, there's so many reasons. I think one of the, one of the primary things that brings people in to witchcraft mm -hmm. is they are, um, okay. There's like three, I'm going to go three different paths with this. Okay. So the first one, uh, is that people are often coming from um, places where they feel like outsiders mm -hmm. um, or they've been told what they are experiencing, like specifically about psychic perception and things like that. They've right. been told that those experiences are not real and they're generally feeling um, as outcasts, you know, and right. we just sort of collect those as, as witches um, mm -hmm. It's a place of empowerment. You know, it's right. a place where you can explore your gifts without judgment. You can explore mm -hmm. God, anything you want. Um, right. And there's not, you're, you, well, I mean, I say there's no judgment. There's still humans involved. So. Right. But the religion itself, you know, if you consider it a religion, and I do, um, 
is not based around shame and judgment. You know, it's about right. experience and exploration and and forging connections with with deity and with spirit mm-hmm. and with everything that's around you. Right. So a lot of people have that it feels like coming home, you know, it feels like mm-hmm. a welcoming environment. Right. So for for me there's definitely that. There's definitely mm-hmm. um that moment of remembering, you know, when you right. first come in, you feel that oh this is this is something I knew before, you know, it mm-hmm. it, it feels like a memory almost. Right. Um but that keeps happening. That mm-hmm. doesn't really go away after that first time. I keep having that experience of something just on the edge of my memory yeah. that I'm reawakening to mm-hmm. constantly. So that's one that's one reason that I continue <laughs> to stay on this path. Yeah. Um Another another reason I think people come to it is because they've been wounded, mm-hmm. um, potentially from from birth religions or previous religious experiences, um, and they're carrying those wounds and they're looking for healing, or they've been through a trauma and the healing available to them wasn't cutting it, you know, right. or they were being dismissed. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of people come here for healing, and mm-hmm. I have definitely experienced profound healing through the practices of witchcraft and Mm -hmm. um and that goes back into that sort of empowerment too you know healing and awakening and recognizing your sovereignty Mm -hmm. um and that is something else that doesn't stop happening you know there's always something else to dig up and examine you know Mm -hmm. and grow from so that's 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 another one. Yeah. That's another reason I stay. You okay. give me some reasons you stay. Why are you why are you still a witch after all these years? I think um when I first found our group, um mm-hmm. it was like you said, it was like coming home. When I finally realized things that I had been doing since I was a child, um that were actually in witchcraft. It, it blew my mind. Um, I mean, I remember picking crystal quartz rocks out of my grandmother's driveway when I was three or four years old, you know. Um, my grandparents bought me a rock tumbler, and we made jewelry and all kinds of neat stuff out of the crystals and rocks that we found in the driveway. Um, you can still do that today, actually. So, I mean, you know, just being in nature uh spent a lot of time in the woods as a kid a lot of time hiking with my friends making forts i mean knocking down saplings pine trees you know making little shelters uh and just just hanging out in nature that that was normal for me that's what i grew up with and um i wasn't in the country i was in a suburb uh you most of the time we lived in the suburbs and it was usually a um not a high expensive neighborhood but usually a new one you know at that time was known as middle class so we had a lot of woods around us and things like that um so we could just take off and go play um and spend all day and come home when the street lights came on you know that kind of thing so once i realized what i had been doing 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 as a kid um you know, it just came naturally to me. And when I realized that other people actually did this too, uh, it was like coming home. It was like finding my family. So that's why I've stuck with it is, you know, again, I've done it my whole life. I just couldn't put a name to it, you know? So this way I have actually people to talk to about it. And it's really cool because they don't judge you and you don't look crazy to them. And it's just a lot easier than to talking to people from church. You know, I, I grew up in church, too. I mean, if you listen to any of our past podcasts, my grandfather was a preacher. You know, um, my parents met in church. I grew up in church as a kid. I put my kids through church as well. Um, and, you know, it it's different. It's a lot different than being able to sit down and talk to people about, hey, I think I lived a past life before, instead of someone chastising you going, no, you only live one life, and then you go to heaven, and that's it. And I'm like, yeah, okay, or whatever. Um, even my grandmother, the 
you know, who was married to my grandfather, who was a preacher, she had the second sight, or, you know, she, she could speak to people who were no longer on this plane of existence. She called it a gift of the Spirit. Well, yeah, that's exactly what it was. Um, we call it witchcraft. You know, some of us have that gift, some don't. But it's still, it's funny how all that stuff from, you know, that she pertained as a gift to the spirit, it still transcends over into witchcraft. And those of us who are bringing that back, it's really cool to see that transition. Um, and to be able to talk to other people who have experienced it as well and not get, again, chastised for believing something that's outside of the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, But that's why I stick around with it. It feels like coming home and I'm with my family when I'm in it. So, You know, you touched on something there. Um, you talked about when you were a kid uh, that that just feeling of wonder, of, mm -hmm. of being part of part of nature, just your natural state. Right. Well, I think part of what happens when you integrate too much into, I guess, particular religions, try to stifle that, you right. know, and um, take all of those things that are perfectly natural and shame them, you know. Mm -hmm. Sex is something to be ashamed of. Oh, uh, yeah. Your body is something Big to one. be ashamed of. The mm -hmm. way you present yourself, uh, you know, I was... I was in the generation still where we were told to, that we had to be ladylike and, you know, yeah. const constantly critiquing my how much of a lady I was acting like. Right. Um, but those things diminish you, you know, and they diminish mm -hmm. your connection to, to the world around you. And I yeah. think that being able to feel free, mm -hmm. you know, to explore and experience and play is right. a big part of what keeps the joy keeps sort of regenerating itself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Once, once you get to the point where you're like this perfect Christian and you're you're fitting exactly in the mold, yeah. then what? You just right. sit there forever. Exactly. You know, there's there's nowhere to grow. Mm -mm. Um, and that's really, I think, the biggest part that just constantly amazes me. And I say this to my students, and I say this all the time, um, is that the the wonder you know the the magic part the right. part where you feel connected and you feel mm -hmm. tuned in and you feel yourself in the flow you know right. that energy just sort of moving through you it never it never becomes at least for me mm -hmm. it never becomes something that's just oh this again you know it's never right. just mundane feeling it always feels like wonder you mm -hmm. know like that that childlike feeling of mm -hmm. when you like when you are are, ex are discovering something new and you're excited right. about it that feeling always every single time mm -hmm. and you know I've been doing this for over 20 years 25 right. years and it never stop. It never stops. Every time there's something new that I've learned, or a new, some a new technique that I've experienced, or mm -hmm. a new spirit that has I've contacted, or just just feeling the synchronicity. It never. It's never boring. It's never like, right. oh, okay, well, yeah. <laughs> Ever. It's always <laughs> like, wow, this is amazing. Right. Every single time. Exactly. And fuck that shit's addictive. <laughs> it is. I it mean. Is. It really is, you know, and then just the curiosity, like prophetic religions where mm -hmm. you have, you have the prophecy. Here's, mm -hmm. here it is. This yeah. is, this is the whole of this, everything you need to know. Mm -hmm. and it's never going to change. That's it. Yeah. Um, feels really, um, dead to me. Mm -hmm. Um, but witchcraft, you know, it's just like, your, your curiosity is never, you never, you, you never run out, you know, there's never an end ever, you know, the right. mysteries are constantly unfolding for you. Mm -hmm. There's and, always something new to explore. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's exciting. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be an, okay, what's next? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm here. I've achieved this, this skill or this, you know, this level of, of whatever I'm trying to accomplish. I've gotten here what's next, you know, mm -hmm. what's, what's behind the next door, what's right. the next area that I can discover. And mm -hmm. 
And it's always unfolding. I, I recently, um, I was in, I was taking a class, of course. Well, I'm taking classes. Um, I'm that witch. Sorry about it. Um, she is. When is she not taking classes? <laughs> I'm very studious. I'm a Sagittarius. I just want to learn all the things. I want to learn everything, but I don't yeah. think I'm going to be able to do that before I die. So it's going to take <laughs> me some time. Uh, I'm going to be one of those spirits that's just constantly here because yeah. I want to keep experiencing all the things. And I'm never going to be an Ascended Master ever because I want to come back and try <laughs> something different. Um, but anyway, so I was in a class and we did, um, it was funny because we were doing a meditation and the my internet, which is awful right mm. now, as we know, it took us like an hour to get started recording this show because my bit. poor internet. Sorry, guys. Okay. Um, but anyway, my internet did the thing, and it cut me off during the class. And I was in the oh. middle of a meditation at the time. That, look, did you wow. see me just get distracted by the look? There's a light on the screen saying we're recording, and I just uh -huh. saw it, and I was like, what's that? And I just, <laughs> Sorry, let me get back Squirrel. to what I'm talking about. They can see me now. We yeah. can't cut this out. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> anyway, hopefully we can cut it out of the audio version, sound guy. Maybe. Um, yeah, maybe. But anyway, so I was in this meditation, and my internet cut out. And uh, the, but I was already, I was down, I was in. Uh, so I just stayed there where we were, and I was just kind of basking in in the energies that we were experiencing in that moment. And everybody else fucking left, right? They continued yeah. on their journey because I couldn't hear them because my internet. Had cut. Uh. Um, so I stayed there for just a really long time, and I just get, kept getting all these deeper and deeper insights and visions um of that particular thing because i sat there with it for so long mm -hmm. where normally i might just get my first impressions and then be like oh, okay i got it and then move mm -hmm. on to the next thing whatever but i just sat there with it for i mean like 20 minutes um in this one spot and i just was hit over and over and over by just these profound uh mysteries that were continuing to awaken more deeply for me mm -hmm. and and I just remember, you know, like I said, it's been more than 25 years. And I just was like, man, I love this shit. Yeah. And, you know, it just, it just yeah. feels like it's, it's magic. It feels like magic. It feels like one of my, um, one of my students calls it the goddess shiver. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking, you know what I'm talking yeah. about? When you, when you, when you connect in and then you get that feeling of mm -hmm. I'm connected. Um, yeah, just that all yeah. the time it never ever ever gets old so if you're practicing magic and it feels dull and it feels dead re-examine your practice like mm -hmm. what are you doing because that's not been my experience at all right. uh i mean i have moments where i'm down and i hate the whole world and you know i want to just throw in the towel and say everything is bullshit. but in those moments i'm experiencing zero magic at all, zero yeah. wonder, zero curiosity, and I have to recognize that that's my shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because when I'm active and when I'm exploring and when I'm following where you know my intuition is telling me to go and I'm listening, mm -hmm. it it doesn't stop. The universe doesn't stop revealing itself to me, and I hope that it never ever does. Right. You know, that's what keeps me coming back. I think that right there more mm -hmm. than anything else. Yeah. You have to look at it and with, what did they say? Uh, childlike wonder. Yeah. Because it yeah. is, that's exactly what it is. It's you, when you, when you start to experience things, something new, you look at it with childlike wonder. So yeah, it's addictive. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> right. You know, man. Yeah. Now, if I just had the energy, <laughs> the, the like physical <laughs> energy right. of a child. And I think it's really, I think it's fun too, because I guess kind, this is kind of on topic. Maybe not. Let's see what happens. Uh, my, my youngest child has started um, really showing an interest and a curiosity about things. And he's starting to s perceive things around mm -hmm. him. Um, and this is all new for me as a parent because I don't fucking know what I'm doing, you know? Right. <laughs> First of all. Second of all, I don't have the experience. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. my, my mother's voice starts to come out, or my grandmother's voice in particular, will start to come out. 
And I'm like, what the fuck? Why? why? You're not going to tell him he's not seeing what he's seeing? What the hell? You know? So I ignore that voice. And then, you know, just listening to him and, and watching him and tuning in in those moments and I'm seeing what he's seeing Mm -hmm. and um, it's been really interesting lately he's been interested in sort of helping me in the garden and helping me with the the animals and we've got tons of deer right now Mm -hmm. constantly in my yard which I love them and they're eating all my plants and I love them anyway (laughs) and I just feel torn but um, but every day we're we're sit and watch two or three deer walk across the yard you know um, he's just He's so excited about just everything. Mm -hmm. Everything excites him. And I want that. You know, I want to stay in those kind of moments where, like, breathing is is Mm -hmm. amazing. (laughs) You know? Yeah. Where, Where just being able to feel and see and connect with people and share ideas with people, like, that's fucking amazing. I sound mm-hmm. like I'm drunk right now. I do. I sound like I'm that <laughs> drunk girl at the party who loves everyone. That's me all the time. <laughs> because I just we're love everybody. <laughs> I love most everybody. Some bitches can fuck all the way off. Okay? Yes, I will agree. <laughs> I'm not going to name any names. No. You know you are. No, I'm just mm. kidding. I really love pretty much everybody. Yeah, uh, I have no problem with majority of the people. You can't, you can't say everybody. There's a few, there's a few that I just I don't have time for, but whatever. Yeah. I don't. I'm I'm amazed that they're alive though, and it fills me with wonder. Yeah. Just just that we're here. Sorry, I'm gonna yeah. fall down a rabbit hole of being okay. amazed by everything. Well, I mean, you've heard people talk about how just for you to be here in this moment in time, everything that had to happen in perfect succession. For mm-hmm. you to be here at this moment in time, that in itself is a miracle. So when you start really to is. look at life in that way, yes, everything is exciting. It's over, what am I, overpowering sometimes. You know, if you start to think about dig into things deeper like that, um, it's like God, where was my grandma and grandpa when they met? You know, and and how did their parents meet and you know you just you start building a little story in your head and it can can get a little it'll it'll take you down a rabbit hole real quick so i know exactly what you're talking about in that respect so yeah and you know there's a flip side to this whole coin too (laughs) because it's not always pretty and it's not always you know happy and joy that you're experiencing Mm -hmm. quite quite often it's it's the opposite it's frustration and it's fear and it's Mm -hmm. um god just grief Mm -hmm. you know but even those moments god and i don't want this to sound like some toxic positivity i'm not but i for me even in those moments of just profound grief Mm -hmm. it's still God, it's still just a wonder that you can love so deeply and that you can experience. Um, I recently lost a friend of mine. um, Gosh, I guess it's been a whole month already now. Mm -hmm. Um, And we didn't see each other very often. Uh, He lived up in New England and, you know, we were classmates. Our our class was online, so we, we talked. But, you know, it it wasn't somebody that was right there with me all the time. Mm -hmm. And it was a sudden, it was, it was a shocking death. Like it was not expected in any way. And it just really hit me harder than I would have expected. And and part of that grieving process was me feeling like I didn't have a right to feel as deeply that loss because I wasn't physically around him all the time, Mm -hmm. you know, and I had to like talk myself through that bullshit yeah but the fact that he was so profoundly loved across so many miles and for so many people Mm -hmm. you know that that's amazing and it was difficult to process all of that but even that was still it's just a, it's just a, amazing. Like you said, it's a, it's just a miracle to be able to experience all the, all the depths and heights 
of mm -hmm. of human consciousness, of feeling, right. of of living, and you know, process it, process it mm -hmm. intellectually, process it through our consciousness, and I think. God, our collective conscious right now is processing so much. And mm -hmm. I think we're a lot of us feeling that too. Right. Um, and it's still, it's still fucking, it's a wonder. It's still amazing. It still overwhelms me, right. even if it's not, you know, a joyful overwhelming. But mm -hmm. that's, that's magic to me. Like that's, those are the moments that, you know, you're alive, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's profoundly addictive. Like, I it can't is. imagine, like, where else would I go? What else would I do? Think about that. <laughs> what? If I was just going to be like, okay, I'm not doing witchcraft anymore. Now, that's part of who you are. <laughs> what would I do? It yeah. is. And I, I think that's, I think that's true. I think that, I think this is what we are. Mm -hmm. I was having this conversation with somebody else the other day. I don't necessarily think it's something that we do. Right. I, th I think that the spell craft, that's a thing that we do, mm -hmm. those sorts of things. But being a witch is something that you are. It's, right. it's something about your nature. It's something about your awareness um, of your relationship mm -hmm. with everything around you. Yeah. Um, and I think you have a, you have a job to do and you're doing it whether or not you recognize it, right. you know, whether or not you're sitting down and lighting your candles and doing your meditations and, mm -hmm. you know, reading your books and going to the festivals and whatever you're supposed to do as a witch, just right. being who you are, mm -hmm. you know, you're part of, of bringing higher consciousness to humanity, you know, right. just, just walking through the world. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's all in who you are. And that's pretty... That's a pretty profound thing too. That's a profound responsibility as well mm -hmm. when you think about it. You've probably experienced this. People who are magical people, and I'm not gonna say that it's just um, only for witches because not everybody identifies that way. Right. Um, so I'll say magical people, and these are the people who are, I consider them witches, they would not identify that way necessarily, mm -hmm. but um, these are people who are connected. These are the people who sort of show up in your life in that exact moment that you needed them to show up, you mm -hmm. know, and they, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Or yeah. they, every time this person comes around, things shift around them. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that in my personal life, like whenever I get close to people, their lives begin to change and mm -hmm. my life changes. And it's, it's just not necessarily anything that you're doing in particular, mm -hmm. but you're just sort of a catalyst. So where right. you, where you are in the web, you know, where you, where you are doing your work or being mm -hmm. existing, you're creating transformation around you. Like that's what right. we do in mm -hmm. the world. Yeah. And that's I've, not easy. <laughs> no, it's not. I had, when I was younger, um, when my, when I'm, my husband and I were dating, my ex-husband when I were dating years ago, we would go out to this club and go dancing. And I loved to dance and him not so much. And I knew how to two-step, but he didn't. So I'd find partners, you know, I'd go up and ask guys to dance. In the time I was on the dance floor with them, I learned their whole history. I knew if they were married or single. I knew who they were married to, how long they'd been married, if they had any kids, what they did for a living. I'm talking like, what's the average song? Three minutes, maybe? Yeah. So when I'd come off the dance floor, I'd go back and I'd tell him everything about this person. And he was like, God, you were only there for like three minutes, you know. Um, another thing that happens to me is I'll be standing in a store. Still to this day, this happens. People don't know me for Adam. And they'll walk up to me and just start up a conversation. And then within a span of two or three minutes, I know their entire life story from beginning to end or something that's going on very profound within their life at that time that they need some sort of guidance on or just simply someone else to listen. A lot of times that's what it is. Just having someone with a non-biased opinion just listen to what they have to say. And I'll certainly stand there and listen to it because I'll learn a lot from their lives and their problems that they're going through. 
that help me in mine. So you're right, we do affect each other and when we interact with other people and it's you can call it witchcraft, you can cause it call it uh, being moved by the spirit. It's all the same thing. And that's what got me about oh sorry, I hit my desk. That's what got me about um, coming into witchcraft. It's everything that I've learned previously it, it has crossed that chasm into witchcraft. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. I brought all of that knowledge with me and I still use it to this day. It's just it's just called by different names, but it's the exact same thing. It's the exact same energy. It's the exact same situations. Um, the same conversations, the same acts, all of it's exactly the same. It's just called something differently. And that's what that's what just amazes me is that it just it crosses boundaries. It really does. And like, you know, I think the perspective is different too because mm -hmm. because we are more free, because right. we don't carry the shame and the guilt and mm -hmm. the rules. Right. I think that gives us a unique ability to be that bridge, mm -hmm. you know, and to move between people. I feel like a lot of my work, my personal work in the mm -hmm. world is to be a bridge, is to bring people together, bring mm -hmm. ideas together and find, you know, kind of walk those liminal spaces. Right. Um, in this world and, and, and in others as well, you know, mm -hmm. but bringing, bringing those energies to where they need to be at the, at the time that they need to be there. Right. Um, so much of what you said of just being in the right place at the right mm -hmm. time for that person who needed you, that right. person needed you to be there to listen, mm -hmm. you know, and who knows how much that affected their life moving forward from that right. point. You know, and sometimes yeah. you get to see it. Sometimes you do know a and lot sometimes of times you don't. Most of the right. times you don't. <laughs> most of the time you don't. Yeah, most of the time but you don't. When you do, when you do see it, for for me, a lot of my what happens around me is mm -hmm. um, I'm a mirror. So <laughs> when people <laughs> people start interacting with me, their shit starts to come up. So that's not always fun. <laughs> so sometimes people don't. They like really are like no. No, yeah. nay to Selena, I will pass mm -hmm. because just my presence or maybe my smart mouth or something uh, brings up stuff they don't want to look at. Yeah. And, you know, even when I don't even say stuff, mm -hmm. I just, but most of the time I be saying stuff. Anyway. <laughs> um, she always yeah. saying something. <laughs> I'm a Sagittarius. If I think it, it's going to come out of my mouth and then yep. it's hard to reel it back in. I've gotten yep. so much better. You would not have liked me at all. You might not like me now, but you definitely would not have liked me then. <laughs> um, but anyway, but, but it, it, you react with people. You, you start yeah. to transform them and they mm -hmm. start to um, awaken to things within themselves right. and around them. And, I, and that's kind of the point. That's kind of why, that's why I teach witchcraft. Look mm -hmm. at me. I'm just like jumping all over the place. I'm excited I know, she's to talk about excited. witchcraft. I'm excited. <laughs> um, my hands start going all over the place. Uh, I have to talk with my hands. Sorry about that. I'm that's trying to right. hold on to them. I'm anyway. sitting here playing with mine, so yeah. <laughs> don't feel bad. It's just not within screen, you know. Yeah, you're smart. I gotta get them down. <laughs> anyway, um, what the hell was I talking about? Wait. Being a bridge. Oh, that, yes. And I might like you. I might not like you because you're Sagittarius and you always <laughs> run in your mouth. <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay. 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 What the hell was I? Well, but what was I about to talk about? I have no idea. I can't tell you that. <laughs> Mm. Hold on, mm. it's gonna come back. It's okay. gonna come back. It almost always comes back. Yeah, I don't know. It's gone. <laughs> it's gone, man. I got excited and everything. Shit. <laughs> it was gonna be good. Uh, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I can feel it slipping away. Anyway, You're what we're talking end. about? We're talking about being a bridge. We're talking yeah. about people being a catalyst for people and that sometimes you talk to them and they see things about themselves that they don't want to mm -hmm. discuss yeah yeah and then where'd we go i don't know man and it's you gone. went into the sagittarius part yeah then i shouldn't have run my mouth and then i would remember <laughs> <laughs> then i would remember what i was gonna say Fuck. it might come back we'll see what happens 
All right. Uh, yeah, now I don't have anything to talk about. Like, my whole brain is empty. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? Oh, man. So it's not your only your internet connection that's a little loose tonight. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Let me... I wish I had a way to reboot it sometimes. Oh, well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Witchcraft is cool, man. <laughs> it is. <laughs> that's kind of what I got. Um, well, shit. Oh, why I teach witchcraft. Okay, there I got you go. It. I'm back. There it I'm is. Back. Don't don't distract me. <laughs> why I teach witchcraft? Because I think that as we do the work, as we do the work of purifying ourselves, of elevating our consciousness, of attuning to higher consciousness and just different kinds of consciousness, mm -hmm. um, we start forming that bridge and we become that bridge. Mm -hmm. And the more of us that do that the more we have a deeper understanding of the universe of yeah. our of why we exist in the way that we do like how crazy is it that we're so conscious you mm -hmm. know how, why i don't know but the more we do that as as a species mm -hmm. the more we evolve as a species so the more of us that do it so i'm teaching you know so that mm -hmm. those people you know become start to become these hubs of change they start to become these bridges um that make these higher levels of consciousness more accessible to everyone that help people start to process their traumas and and their prejudices and all of the things that are holding us back mm -hmm. as a species we start to process those just being in proximity to the vibrations that 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 people who who have achieved those different different states of awareness who've processed their shit for right. you know start working on processing their shit it's, sure. it seems to be never yeah. ending um but as you evolve you vibrate at a different frequency mm -hmm. and you do and you'll start to see like friends or people who just don't harmonize with you anymore start mm -hmm. to fall away in your life um and you know, you just, you, I can't be, look, I cannot be around people that I used to be around and just happily, I mean, they just, they just are squabbling and, and just judgmental and, mm -hmm. you know, everything that comes out of their mouth is, is wrapped up in their own ego and their own self-loathing and their own right. hatred of anything different. And I'm just like, I can't, I fucking cannot yeah. be around that anymore. Um, but you you evolve mm -hmm. and and the more people that are doing that work they're evolving and our collective consciousness is evolving and getting mm -hmm. closer and closer to recognizing that you know we are we are every bit as holy and divine as everything mm -hmm. we're reaching for you know what i mean there's right. nothing out there Mm -hmm. that you're not going to find within you, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so that's where you have to start. And we cause other people to start having those awakenings, the people that are mm -hmm. around us, right. you know? And you may not see how it unfolds. Mm -mm. You may not see where it ends. You may not, they may not decide to follow that. Right. But a lot of them do, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I see it in my students. The more they're doing the work, the more they're awakening to mm -hmm. their divine self, the more the people around them are starting to shift. Their lives are starting to shift. And sometimes right. it feels like they're in like a, a rock tumbler mm -hmm. and everything feels a little chaotic and mm -hmm. while it's falling into place. But that's part of the process. Right. That's part of the process of the work that we do as witches. Mm -hmm. But then they start to rebuild and they start to come through and they start mm -hmm. to attain abilities and awareness that they never had before. Right. You know, and then that passes on. People around them see that and they're they're drawn to it. And then they want to they want to know more, you know, and mm -hmm. that's how we can bring bring the whole species out of the muck. You know, <laughs> that's why I do it. Yeah. Yep. I have to remind myself of that when it's just grading papers time. Right. <laughs> and I'm just like, eh, yep. I don't know why I do this. Oh, yeah. The thing. <laughs> the, the big thing. work. 
<laughs> the, oh, this is why. Okay. Oh, uh, this is why. The important part, the, right. the paperwork part sucks, <laughs> but the rest is great. <laughs> I don't know any time that the paperwork is an awesome, fun time, <laughs> and on anything, you know, I don't know. but. It's the outcome that we're shooting for anyway. You know, I love your rock tumbler analogy. That's just perfect. That hits on all levels for me. It feels like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you put in a rough grade sand to start the, the process of smoothing the stones down. Then you put yeah. another grade of sand that smooths them even more. It takes all the rough edges off. And then you put in another grade of sand that makes it shiny and polishes it and makes them super smooth. So... If you look at that situation for those rocks going from each stage, our our souls, our personality, our spirits all go through the same same process. If you look at it, that it's just a really cool analogy. I like how you put that together. That's awesome. You're right. I mean, that's basically the alchemical process. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And and <laughs> and I have to say, like <clears throat> transforming, you know, lead into gold doesn't mm -hmm. quite have the same visceral feeling as being inside a rock tumbler right. because it you feel being purified you feel your rough edges being smoothed you feel oh, yeah. being grated on you know and bounced around and tumbled and yeah it can feel Tossed chaotic about. Yep. yeah it can be extremely and, chaotic yeah yeah and that's you have to go through those moments to mm -hmm. come out into the next level yeah. You know. And I think that's why my awakening, you know, if you listen to any of our old podcasts, I've talked about my awakening before. I think that's why my awakening was so traumatic. And many other people I've talked to who've been through it as well, it's, it's been traumatic because all of your old belief system is completely shattered and tossed away. And you have to rebuild from that. And it and it takes time. It takes, it takes strength. It takes... Um, patience, which God knows I don't have a whole lot of patience, but it takes a lot of patience to, to rebuild that, you know, and, and get back to, you know, where you're comfortable again. But it really does. It shakes you to your, your actual foundation is completely shaken. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah and I think, I think one of the difficult things for people to, it's difficult for two reasons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here we go. Um, it's difficult for people when they have those awakening moments, when they realize that everything they thought maybe wasn't what they thought it was. Right. Um, and then they have to, they have to step forth without that blueprint. Mm -hmm. They have to step forth without the path laid out for them. Mm -hmm. And that shit's scary. Oh, it's yeah, scary it's to have to realize that there's not necessarily going to be someone to hold your hand and guide mm -hmm. you every step and tell you and keep you safe and right. tell you, you know, what to do in every mm -hmm. situation and, and just follow that, you yeah. know, that's, it's scary to stand on your own two feet, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. it's scary. It's scarier still, I think for people even beyond that point, because a lot of people come, you know, that want to learn witchcraft and they, they want that. They want you to mm -hmm. tell me, tell me exactly what this belief is right. <laughs> and tell me how to do it. Right. And then I'll just do that. And it's mm -hmm. not how it works, you yep. know? Um, and the, the other scary part that may be even scarier than recognizing that there's not a path you mm -hmm. are making the path it's your right. path nobody mm -hmm. else has walked it before right you know the next scary part is recognizing that you are part of this divine <laughs> construct whatever the fuck this is that we're that we're calling existence right you know you are in control of it as much mm -hmm. there, there's no like sky deity that's going to come down and, and handle everything for you. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, there are deities. Yes, there are sky deities. Don't, don't email me. Um, <laughs> but, but you know, you are divine. Mm -hmm. You are what you have to put into this world mm -hmm. 
is irreplaceable. There's no one else yeah. that can do it. There's no divinity that can do it. There's right. no other spirit that can do what you have to do mm -hmm. by being who you are. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That There's no spare parts. You have to be here. You have to do what you're here to do. Mm -hmm. And you may not ever fucking know what that is. It may just be continuing to breathe in and out every day. Yep. It may be going to work. It may be mm -hmm. raising a couple of kids. It may not feel like, hey, I'm doing the great work of the fucking universe. Mm -hmm. I'm a goddess. I am, I am maintaining order in the universe. But you fucking are yeah. every day, you know? Yeah. And that is really difficult for people to accept mm -hmm. their power and accept the responsibility of that. That's just hard. That is hard. hard. Yeah. You it know? is. It would be so easy to just, uh, just keep my little rule book and do that. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's, that's why I think it can be so traumatic when people have, you know, awakenings mm -hmm. to, to, to the fact that they're witches, you know, that's yeah. scary. Yeah. Not to mention all the bad shit they heard about us, and only some of that stuff's true. Yeah, you have to get past the scary part. Yeah. You have to get past Man. all of that. That's pretty much my whole experience with witchcraft is just facing fears. Yeah. Okay, I faced that one. What's the next one? Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it, keep, it, it mostly keeps coming around to, I'm afraid of my own power. You know? That's a big one. It's, it's huge. I'm one. afraid of my own success. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid of letting the world see how fucking amazing I am. You yeah. know, that's hard for mm -hmm. people to, to grab onto yeah. without all of the social bullshit of, no, I should, I should be more modest or I should feel this way. No, you're a fucking goddess. Get out there yeah. and do your damn work. Mm -hmm. You might be a god. You might be a non-binary, wonderful divinity, you know? You're a divine mm -hmm. spirit. Go do your divine work. Yeah. Yeah. That's to all the listeners. Go do. <laughs> Go do your work while you're watching a podcast. Go. <laughs> well, watch the podcast. That might be part of your divine work. Yeah. And we're just so. giving you the tip off. Go ahead. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. We've tossed Later, your ball and I'll take watch it. Watch the rest of the show, then go do your divine work. Right. There you go. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like this is this conversation is coming up a lot in, in just personal one on one conversations though. Yeah. I think people are really we're in a rock tumbler right now, twenty twenty, twenty twenty one. And yeah. I think people are really starting to question, you know, everything, everything. Everything. Why why do we do things the way that we do? Mm -hmm. Do we have to? Is yeah. there are there better ways? Yeah. Can we do it better? Yeah, yeah. and then there then there are those who are I, I think, and mm, I could be wrong. I'm wrong a lot. It's fine. I think that they're kind of holding on to a certain amount of, it's fear. It's fear, fear mm -hmm. of change. You know, they want to hang on to everything has to be the way it was, which nothing's ever going to be the way it was. Mm -hmm. That's not how life works. No. But they try so hard to hold on to that because it's a feeling of innocence and it's a feeling of security and it's a feeling yeah. of I know where everything is, is to be in in the world and I and I know the order of things and if and if right. things look like that then mm -hmm. then the world is in order mm -hmm. but it's not the world mm -hmm. is constantly evolving and changing and it's chaotic and it's you know it's not it, transformation is not easy ever and it's so the the people who are holding on to that mm -hmm. are holding everyone back and mostly right. themselves and it's and it's coming from a place of of fear and it's coming from a place i think of trauma i think that if you feel like you can't grow and you feel like you can't experience new things that's that's difficult i feel like there's there's a wound there you know yeah i agree and you know, it's as long as it doesn't affect, um, as long as it's not affecting their life directly, they're okay. But as soon as mm -hmm. something from the outside comes in and affects their life, their schedule, the way they feel, 
things are. They have their life in a nice little package. And then you know, all these extraneous things start coming at them and start shaking their life up. It's scary. It's really scary. And a lot of people will panic. And mm -hmm. I think that's where a lot of this fear mongering is coming from now. And um, because people are grasping onto things that they either know or believe to be true and are hanging on for dear life because things are changing so swiftly. You know, and I think there's a feeling of becoming obsolete too. I think people have a, yeah. have a fear of feeling like, well, everything is so different mm -hmm. and I, I, you know, and, and this person has not made an effort to roll with the changes. You know, right. it doesn't feel so sudden and traumatic if you're paying attention to what's outside of your exactly. bubble. Exactly. Yeah. You know, but when when you've built a glass house around yourself and, and that bubble bursts, it mm -hmm. seems like you're in, you know, you're in a whole different world. Well, you're not. It's been right. evolving around you. You just weren't paying attention, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah, that's traumatic. And, and, and I think there is a feeling of becoming obsolete or you know, just disconnected. And, and that's a huge, that's a human thing. Like feeling like you're not part of, of society. You're no longer needed in, in the social group. I think that goes back to like a deeply instinctual thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that contributes too to, to why people are so, so hardcore against change, mm -hmm. it, even when it doesn't affect them, right. you know, even when it doesn't affect them directly at mm -hmm. all, you know, it just doesn't fit into their box of the way mm -hmm. things should be. Right. And, and, and I feel for myself, I feel this a little bit. I feel like a geriatric pagan at this point <laughs> because I know I'm still so fresh, but yet, um, because of the, oh, I'm gonna just, the witch talk generation, I guess. Yeah. Um, the way that the youngsters are learning nowadays, I feel like an ageist and everything else. Go ahead, email me, it's fine. Um, <laughs> the way people are learning witchcraft now, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, it's just so kind of foreign to my process. Um, because it's a lot of it's, they're literally learning through social media yeah. and they're learning, you know, sound bites mm -hmm. from people who learned it from sound bites. You yeah. know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they took the teaser, the advertisement, yeah. go, go buy my book. This is what it's about. And they took that as if it's the whole thing. Like yeah. they're confusing the map for the terrain. Mm -hmm. They've taken the map and they're like, this is it. It's not exactly. it. That's a map of the real thing. Mm hmm but they're not going to the real thing and they don't mm -hmm. know how, and they don't know that there is a real thing. They think the map is the real thing. Am I making sense at all? I feel like a crazy lady, but anyway, <laughs> thanks. Um, if you know what I mean, then you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's so they're missing out on like the, the ones that want to hex the moon. Now they want to hex all up. Yeah. It's just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> this is my face when I read this stuff. I'm like, uh, but that's not how any of this works. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah. yeah, I'm starting to feel a little obsolete. Like, does anybody want to actually learn the craft anymore, or yeah. or just like internet memes good enough for you guys? Is that fine? Well, okay, and you go gotta. Remember, I think the internet memes is it's the beginning of it, and if they choose. If they choose to go deeper, they mm -hmm. will. If they choose to just stay on the surface, that's what they're going to do. Um, but at least they're getting, and I hate to say at least they're getting some information instead of none at all, because some of them are getting the wrong information. It's not great information. It's very skimmy, you know, very at the mm -hmm. top. Um, but every. I hate to say this to you. Everybody's journey is different. Everyone has it put before them differently. Um, You're right. Me was picking up rocks out of my grandma's driveway, you know, when I was three or four years old. Um, and playing in the woods. You know, yours was completely different. Um, you know, any of our friends, their paths are completely different as to how they got here. So it's really hard for us to say how the witch talk generation is going to actually evolve. 
you know, now look, damn it, on down I'm sitting here trying to be judgy. I know you are. No, and that's okay. <laughs> no, you're right. It's okay. We're all. I hope that they do. Yeah, I hope they do. I hope they if do. It, if it's if it's an entry point, mm -hmm. great. Yeah. If it's what what worries me the most is that because we had dabblers. There's always dabblers, you sure. know. Back back in our day, you know, it was mm -hmm. it was the Ouija board, or it was you know. Right. Light as a feather, stiff as a board, you right. know, or it was, um, I watched <laughs> the craft and now I'm yeah. a witch. Um, yeah. and you know, but some people that was an entry point and that led to deeper mm -hmm. exploration. Great. Yeah. It was not nearly as widespread. Right. And I think that a, a lot of the satanic panic mm -hmm. came from that too, from dabblers. Yeah. Right. And I think a lot of, I, I think because witchcraft is not, it's dangerous. It can you be. can yeah. fuck yourself up. Mm -hmm. You can hurt yourself. You yeah. can get con in contact with um, with spirits that want to fucking hurt you, mm -hmm. and they will. And if you don't know what you're doing, okay. Um, so yeah, I think that I don't want people getting hurt. Yeah. I don't want people turning away from it you know mm -hmm. I, I had a friend um growing up actually this is one of my this this friend was the first time i heard the word wicca and obviously what she was practicing now with my understanding was not at all wicca yeah. but she she had gone to a different school for the summer and then she came back and she was wiccan she told me and i was like oh, that's fascinating i think she was just trying to scare me but that backfired <laughs> because i was a witch and she had no idea right. um so I was like, tell me all about it. Tell me everything. And, um, you know, and she would have different things she would do, like to communicate with Lucifer. And I'm like, let's do it. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't, I don't think, I don't think her plan worked there to scare me, but, um, <laughs> but the thing is it backfired because she wasn't, she didn't know what the fuck she was doing. And she had some scary experiences cause she mm -hmm. didn't have any training. She didn't know how to handle anything. She, she either had gotten some bad information or was just making shit up on the fly which is fine. Um, but now she is like a super hardcore evangelist Christian type who is judgmental as fuck. Yeah. Okay. And it's like, it's, it, it completely backfired and she did not have an awakening and she did not, you know, explore more. And because of that experience, she uses that, Mm -hmm. to perpetuate um, fear of witches. Mm -hmm. And that leads to, I mean, there are still places in the world where witches are killed for being witches. Sure. Or people suspected of being witches are killed. That still happens. Mm -hmm. People still get arrested. People still go to jail. There are witchcraft laws still on the books today. Yeah. In the United States. Okay. This is, that's what scares me is, yeah. you know, you're going to, you're going to, push the wrong button mm -hmm. and you're going to get people in a frenzy mm -hmm. and they come after the witches. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. Part of me is really glad that, that these things are more accessible for people because mm -hmm. it's, it's easier to, to find information. But part of me is like, mm, 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 mm. Yeah. it's too easy. It <laughs> you know, this is going to backfire. It is. But that's one reason so, why we're here is we're trying to bring the right information to people who like to watch us for whatever reason. <laughs> the right so information. Don't do like what we us. say. Yeah. Don't do what anybody else says. <laughs> that's no, not I true just, either. I just want people to think. I just want people to think and yeah. explore and yeah, <sighs> yeah, and study. You know, like study what came before you, right? And then move, and then and then explore. You know, from there. Mm -hmm. Don't you don't have to throw it all out. No, I don't you know. can pick. Maybe I'm an pick, old lady. No, you can pick one area of interest. Um, you know, rocks were a big thing with me, obviously, and mm -hmm. I did a lot of research into mineral mineral minerals, minerals, minerals and crystals. Yes. Yeah, new word. Um, and you know that that was kind of a segue for me to start looking at other things. So you that's know, true. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right. <laughs> You're I'm not right. always right. I am not always right. Well, look, 
I'm glad you're doing this to me because I do this shit to other people and it's good to have a taste of my own medicine. Okay. But you're right. You're right. I should. Yeah. I, I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to judge the witch talk, which is, I'm going to judge them a little bit. Little Some bit. of the things they do, I'm, I'm going to judge. Sorry about it. Um, <laughs> oh, well. Um, yeah. There's that. Yeah. What was I going to say? I was going to say something. You made me think of a thing and then I forgot it again. Again? Yeah. <laughs> My brain is slippery today. I don't know. I don't know what I was going to think be. of it in a minute. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it bothers me that it's gone. I tell you what, having kids, if you want to keep oh, it'll a, like, do a it clear to you in a brain, heartbeat. Yeah. I don't have no kids. Don't have kids. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do don't. It. Oh, yep, man. it will definitely rattle your brain. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Yeah, what were you just talking about? Which talk? <laughs> I don't want to talk about that anymore. Girl. I don't even have a TikTok. I, I rely on you to send me the funny videos. Oh, I don't send you half of them, girl. I just send you the funny Don't send ones. me. The <laughs> amount you're sending me is the perfect amount. I got two I, that I'm going to send you when we get through here. I feel like if I got on there, I would get... I, I'm kind of ADD, so I feel like I'd just be like, what, what, what? And I'd just be constantly flipping. Oh, it's easy. Flipping. It's so easy. Yeah. It's like Facebook. You that. get on it and you lose an hour within just a, what feels like a few seconds. I don't need that in my life. I don't need Facebook in my life. I'm fixing yeah. to delete that shit. Yeah. <laughs> As you can tell, because I never fucking post. When I do, it's like a plant. <laughs> <laughs> here's a here's a picture of a pretty, pretty flower. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's my I new drew, baby. I drew this picture of a plant. That's, <laughs> that's pretty much <laughs> my life right now. I feel like the podcast has run its course tonight. I How think are you so. Feeling? Yeah, uh, I'm there. We, we hit that sweet We're spot. We're kind of like, it's time, it's time to shut the fuck up. Yeah. Look, it's past my <laughs> bedtime. And we'll let the sound guy edit it out and make it a lot cleaner than what it is. It's, it's harder for him to edit the video. I know. Because it'll just, like, chop. Yeah. It'll be all right. It'll be we'll all right. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> well, uh, I really uh, have enjoyed talking to you tonight. And I enjoyed talking to you, too. Let's do it again. So, uh, so for those of you listening and watching, thank you so much for being here. We love you. Um, l like, subscribe, click all the buttons. I think there's, like, a little notification bell. Mm -hmm. Do that. Um, yeah, yeah. If you're listening to the podcast... <laughs> We are on YouTube as well, and you can see us being ridiculous with our faces. And forgetting, and every, you and can forgetting look at all, what we're talking about. You can watch about. it. Yeah, yeah, you can watch it. So that's an option. Do it, please. <laughs> um, what else? So, okay, I tried to record with Nicholas Pearson, who is delightful, and we love him. Um, but my internet was being crazy, so we rescheduled. So I promised you guys um, an interview with Nicholas Pearson. It's coming. Um, we're going to do that. That'll be the end of September, first part of October when yeah. that comes out. I'm really um, excited to talk to him. Yeah, he's he's your rock guy. He's, he's your my crystal rock guy. Witch. Yep. Oh, man, he's so knowledgeable. Oh, my God, and he's just so sweet and genuine, and I just I want to hug him, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, maybe we're From not a that close. I don't know. From yeah. a distance. Virtual yes. hug. Bless it. <laughs> so, you know, if you want to, you can check out his book. He's got several, several books out. Yep. Um, and then ask us questions that we can ask him when okay. he's on the show. And then later in September, probably going to come out in October, we're going to have Dawn the Kitchen Witch back on the show. And she is going to uh, be telling us about her new book that she's working on. Yep. And um, what else? I've got some people I want to line up, uh, but I'm not going to announce them until I have them lined up. Okay. Um, yeah. And we've had some excellent listener questions. Look, we just fucked around a lot this year. I get that. Um, and our listeners have been like, you should talk about this. You should talk about this. Great suggestions. Awesome. And I have them. I took them. I put them in a list. I have them. We're going to talk about them. Okay. Yeah. So we'll be back with lots of, lots of good stuff uh, in a couple weeks. Okay. Sounds good. That's that. Uh, I wish you all a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. And thank you for listening. And blessed be. Bye, y'all.
Thank you all so much for listening, and don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe through your favorite podcast provider. It helps us get our podcast in front of more listeners just like you. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can leave us a voicemail by clicking the link in the description of this episode, and you can always find us on Facebook and Instagram by searching for Crossroads and Cauldrons Podcast. <laughs>